And, you know, as we've done I'm from day one, my administration is making it easier than ever for Americans to access these tools. Today, I'm announcing the launch of COVID.gov, COVID.gov, a one-stop <coughs> one shop where anyone in America can find what they need to navigate the virus. Free vaccines and boosters, free at-home tests, high-quality masks, and uh, for the latest information about the level of COVID-19 spread in your community, you can get that immediately. Now, you'll also be able to find our new test to treat locations, which I announced in my State of the Union address. These are pharmacies and other places in your neighborhood where you can get tested, and if you're positive, you can get life-saving treatments all in one stop. We've already stood up 2,000 test and treat sites, test and treat sites across the country. We're also nearly at, we have nearly 200 sites just to serve military families and veterans communities as well. We've done, uh, what we've done throughout the pandemic, we've ensured there, uh, these locations are at the hardest hit, hardest to reach communities as well. The bottom line, no longer will Americans have to scour the internet to find vaccines, treatments, tests, or masks. It's all there. And just go visit covid.gov, covid.gov. And let me remind you, when I took office about 14 months ago, the pandemic was raging, the economy was reeling, and the deficit was soaring. Most schools were closed. We didn't have enough vaccines. The unemployment claims were sky high. And then we got to work and we delivered. Enough vaccines for every American months ahead of schedule. Effective treatments, at-home tests that are free and accessible. Over 99% of our schools are open again. Businesses are open again. And because of how we responded, we created more jobs last year than ever before, 6.7 million jobs. And by the way, we did it while cutting the deficit, the largest one-year deficit reduction in American history. Say that again, the largest one-year deficit reduction in American history. But none of that happened by accident. We are able to do it because we coordinated across the government partner with state and local leaders, governors on both sides of the aisle, and the private sector to leverage every resource we had to fight against this virus. We left no stone unturned, and we were able to do it because Congress worked with us and provided us the necessary funding. But now, just as we've reached the critical turning point in this fight, Congress has to provide the funding America needs to continue to fight COVID-19. Well, we're, at, we're already seeing the consequences of congressional inaction. The monoclonal antibodies, take monoclonal antibodies, for example. They've helped save lives. This isn't partisan, it's medicine. But Congress hasn't provided enough money to keep purchasing these monoclonal uh, antibodies. We've had to cancel planned orders and cut the supply we're sending to the states. Without more funding, we'll start to run out of them by the end of May, the end of May. We've also had to scale back our plan to purchase more preventive therapies for Americans who are immunocompromised, critical tools to protect the most vulnerable among us. Without more funding, we risk running out of the supply by this fall. The same is true of testing. It took months to ramp up our testing capacity. The Omicron, we saw how vital, and with Omicron, we saw how vital it was. And we have enough tests on hand to weather the surge. Without funding, we're not going to be able to sustain the testing capacity beyond the month of June. And if we fail to invest, we leave ourselves vulnerable if another wave of the virus hits. Look, on vaccines and most important tool in this fight, we're also running a risk. Yesterday, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, authorized the fourth shot for those 50 years and older. We know boosters are critical to providing an additional level of protection. That's why I plan to get my second booster today, uh, right here after I'm done speaking. If you haven't gotten your first booster, please don't wait. Do it today. Those who are 50 and older, as well as those who are Im Im immunocompromised, can now get, it, get even more protection than they have from the initial uh, first doses. 
We have enough supply to give booster shots to those newly eligible individuals. But if Congress fails to act, we won't have the supply we need this fall to ensure the shots are available free, easily accessible for all Americans. Even worse, if we need a different vaccine for the future to combat a new variant, we're not going to have enough money to purchase it. We cannot allow that to happen. Congress, we need to secure additional supply now. Now. We can't wait until we find ourselves in the midst of another surge to act. It'll be too late. And we also need this, this funding to continue our efforts to vaccinate the world with commitments we made. It's critical to our ability to protect against new variants. There's no wall you can build high enough to keep out a virus. Congress needs to act now, please. Let me close with this. I've worked so hard to get our lives. We've worked so hard to we, all of us, have worked so hard to get our lives back. We're summoning every ounce of American resilience, pulled every lever of our government, called upon the goodness, decency, and patriotism of the American people. Together, we turned an unthinkable pain into an extraordinary progress and purpose. Americans are back to living their lives again. We can't surrender that now. Congress, please, act. You have to act immediately. The consequences of an action are severe. They'll only grow with time. But it doesn't have to be that way. We've proven what we can do when we work together. So I urge Democrats and Republicans to get this done with urgency. Let's stand united. Let's continue to pull together. Let's get this done. Thank you, and God bless you all, and may God protect our troops, and I'm going to get my second booster shot. All right, that is President Biden announcing today the launching of the COVID.gov website. That is a one-stop shop for all things COVID. So think mask, masks, testing locations, vaccine locations, test and treat locations too, where you can get a test. And if you come back positive, you can start getting treatment right then and there. President Biden also urging Congress to provide more funding for treatments and free vaccines, as well as testing, saying that we will... Ukraine as part of peace talks. Ukraine is great. Is, is the U.S. willing to provide security guarantees to Ukraine as part of peace talks? Okay. All right. Mr. President, are you going to extend Title 42? We'll have a decision on that soon. What did President Zelensky tell you about the... ...the reason for conflicts of vaccination will affect your... Uh, ...the fight against COVID here? What did President Zelensky tell you about? Somebody asked me about the vaccine. Are you going to fund? I'll just be able to Wonderful. Mr. President, what did you hear from President Zelensky today about negotiations with Russia? I've always thought that it discourages people getting the vaccination when they watch people get a needle in their arm. So uh, I apologize for discouraging It didn't hurt a bit. And uh, I was able to roll my sleeve up and Thank you all. Are you going to trust to the lawyers? 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 Are you going to trust